Welcome to the nurse station. Today we are going to start acid base imbalances. As always, this video is for educational purposes only, and I hope to give you a good foundation because acid base imbalances are seen throughout multiple disorders, kind of like fluid and electrolytes. So, this is the first video of three. Um, we're going to start with the general introduction and talk briefly about the buffer system, but please be on the lookout for our respiratory um, acid base imbalances and then your metabolic acid base imbalances. So, very quickly, we should understand that our blood pH is believed to be in homeostasis when it is between the levels of 7.35 to 7.45. And we have to think if it gets less than 7.35, it's now becoming acidic in nature. If it gets above 7.45, it's becoming alkalotic in nature or more basic, okay? So let's think about the things in our body that dramatically attribute to this acid-base imbalance. And I've labeled whether these things are acids or if they're a base. So hydrogen ion is an acid and actually is the ion that we look at to determine our actual pH value. CO2 is an acid, primarily controlled by our lungs. So we could, if we're retaining too much CO2 and it's an acid, we could be in an acidic disorder. Um, and we're gonna talk more about that when I get to respiratory disorders. And then we have our bicarbonate, which is a base. So HCO3, which is a base. And yes, in your textbook, you are gonna see all of these chemistry um, equations pretty much to show you how each turns into what and what is excreted where. I'm gonna break it down to, I have been a practicing nurse for over 10 years and this is what I think about when I'm caring for my clients, okay? So let's start with hydrogen ion and we're gonna talk about the three systems that help maintain our acid-base balance. Remember, when we're in trouble, if we ever got outside of our homeostasis, the 7.35 to 7.45, our body will try to cope. Our body will try to fight. And how it tries to fight is with these three systems. So it always, let's say, and uh, I'll use the example of renal failure for acidosis. Let's say I go into renal failure. Think about it. your kidneys need to filter toxins out from your body. So I go into renal failure, I can't filter out toxins, and acid is gonna increase in my body. So as soon as we have an acid-base imbalance starting to occur, and think if we start to have more acid, we start to get a, a pH that decreases to go to this acidic state, my buffer system's gonna kick in immediately. The buffer system shifts so many ions. It's just chloride, it's just hydrogen ion. I am gonna talk about what I would think about of shifting of ions as a nurse in one second over here. Then, if we can't maintain homeostasis with our buffer system kicking in, our lungs can kick in. And lungs primarily control carbon dioxide. So they can help either excrete more carbon dioxide, which is the acid, if we're too acidic. They can help retain carbon dioxide, which is the acid, if we're in an alkalotic problem to try to get more acid. And then, if that doesn't work, our kidneys will kick in. So these are our three primary systems of defense against acid-base imbalances. And let's just go a little bit deeper about the hydrogen ion. Because, again, we need to understand that this level is based upon serum blood levels of hydrogen ion. But remember, all of these components influence hydrogen ion. Okay, there's a lot of components that influence hydrogen ion, but let's think about it. If we have increased hydrogen ion in our blood, and hydrogen ion is an acid, and when I say increased, increase more than normal, what is our pH going to look like? Our pH is going to become more acidic, so it will stop to start to drop. Or we could add decreased hydrogen ion in our blood, and remember, if hydrogen ion is this acid and we have too little acid, our pH is gonna to start to increase and it's gonna become alkalotic, okay? So that's just a very basic understanding of, hey, based upon the hydrogen ion levels in our blood helps determine our pH. But remember, hydrogen ion is an acid. So if we have little hydrogen ion in our blood, 
we have little acid, making our blood more alkalotic or more basic. If we have high hydrogen ion in our blood, again, it's an acid. So we have too much, too much acid in our blood, lead into an acidic state. And like I said, the first thing to kick in is our, is our buffer system. And if you read in your NCLEX prep books or your textbooks, it's going to talk about the shifting of so many things. Me as a nurse, I really want to know how potassium is influenced, okay? Because potassium is shifted in acid-base imbalances. And if we think about potassium, if it's high or low, can lead to life-threatening problems such as cardiac dysrhythmias. So just to remind you, normal potassium levels, and again, your resource could be slightly different from mine, but typically normal potassium levels are 3.5 to 5. Your resource could say 3.5 to 5.3. Again, depending on the resource, it could be a slightly different from those numbers. So let's talk about how potassium looks in an acidic state and an alkalotic state. Because in my nursing brain, if we have imbalances of potassium, we need to recognize it quickly and we need to try to fix it quickly, okay? So, this is just fake, I'm a very visual person, but my body's normal homeostasis, just pretend, is three hydrogen ion and three potassium, okay? Inside and outside my cell, again, not normal, of course, I would die with this level of ions in my blood, but just for visual purposes, okay? So, we are in an acidic state. Let's use that renal failure client again. Let's say I'm in renal failure, I can't excrete my toxins, and acid starts to build up, okay? So, let's look at this picture. Acid starts, excuse me, let me grab my colored markers. So, acid starts to build up, all right? And remember, what is our acid? Hydrogen ion is an acid. So, acid starts to build up. Instead of my three hydrogen ion in my blood, I now have six. Well, remember, the more hydrogen ion you have, the more acidic your pH becomes. So with three additional hydrogen ion, my pH is gonna to start to decrease. Let me explain how your body copes. Remember the buffer system, and technically, this is, just think of it not so much as the buffer system when we're talking about potassium and hydrogen ion shifts. Just think about it as a way that your body helps you cope, okay? So, I now have too much hydrogen ion in my blood. What's gonna happen, your body's gonna cope. And your body is gonna shift that hydrogen ion into the cell. So now, I have two extra hydrogen ion into my cell, right? But look. With our IV here, remember our serum blood levels are always drawn from our extracellular space. We're not drawing blood from inside our cell, it's outside of our cell, okay? So what happens, your body, you can't just shove things inside a cell and nothing come out. What's gonna happen is your body is actually gonna push potassium outside the cell. So look, even though my body is helping me with this acidic disorder by helping to shove hydrogen ion in the cell so it's not in our extracellular space or our serum blood where we draw our labs from, now we have too much potassium outside of our cell because my normal homeostasis is three potassium. So I want you to think with acidic disorders, acidic disorders equal hyperkalemia because this shifting of potassium and hydrogen ions is one way that our body helps us cope. So do you see how, yes, it's helped reduce the acidic problem in our blood, but now we have more potassium in our blood, okay? So again, a way that our body helps us cope is the shifting of potassium and hydrogen ions. And with this acidic disorder, we're gonna try to shove our acid, our hydrogen ion into our cell so it decreases in our serum blood, in our extracellular space, and then we're gonna push potassium from inside our cell outside and now increasing it in our serum lab draws. So that's why a lot of times when you're in metabolic acidosis, they have hyperkalemia. Respiratory acidosis, they can have hyperkalemia if the body's already coped in this way. So really look at your potassium volumes for your acid-base imbalances. So let's do the next example. So alkalosis. 
Remember, this is my body's normal homeostasis. Three hydrogen ions outside the cell, three potassium ions outside the cell, and again, three inside as well for hydrogen ion and potassium. Remember, this is my blood vessel. Let's pretend this is a vein because this is an IV, and you always draw your lab values from your extracellular space. So what matters for our results, what matters to know what's going on inside our body is the values outside in our extracellular space. Now, we're in an alkalotic disorder. Let's say I'm vomiting excessively. Think how much acid is in your stomach to help break down food particles. So I start to vomit and I start to vomit more. I'm gonna lose acid from my stomach to the outside environment. Let's say they have a paralytic ileus and my bowels aren't functioning at all. Now we put an NG tube down, right? The tube that goes through the nose to the stomach and it's gonna constantly suck out anything that's in my stomach. So we are just losing a lot of acid to the outside environment. So let's look what happens. Remember hydrogen ion is an acid. I'm vomiting, I lose my acid. I'm vomiting, I lose my acid. Look how little acid you have in your blood now. The lower the acid is, the more alkalotic or basic your pH is gonna go. So in this situation, my pH is going to increase. Well, our body is gonna cope by taking hydrogen ion from inside the cell and shifting it to the outside of the cell. You see that? All right. So I just took hydrogen ion from inside the cell and I shifted it out. Okay. But remember, we can't just shift stuff to the extracellular space and that and be done with it. Something has to go back into the cell for coping. So what's going to actually go inside the cell is our potassium. So the potassium is going to shift inside the cell. Okay? So remember, my normal homeostasis for potassium is three potassium. Look how low my potassium is right now because it's not in my extracellular space anymore. When we draw my blood, my potassium value is going to, get, is going to be low. So I want you to think with alkalosis, excuse me, let me grab my blue marker, you are going to think hypokalemia. And hopefully that will help you understand a little bit more about the shifting of ions. Again, this is in my nursing brain that I think about. That's why in acidosis, we are constantly looking for hyperkalemia. In acidosis, we are treating hyperkalemia. Um, for instance, clients in DKA, they, they're in an acidic state. They're getting insulin not only to decrease the blood glucose, but to push that potassium back into the cell. Um, and I want you to think in alkalotic states or um, states of alkalosis, you need to be looking for hypokalemia. Because remember, anytime we mess with potassium, we are at risk for cardiac dysrhythmias and life-threatening events, okay? So very basic intro to acid-base imbalances. Again, if your instructor wants you to go more detailed into the buffer system, you need to do so. But in my nursing brain, I always think about how potassium shifts in acid-base imbalances. Stay tuned for my next video on respiratory acidosis versus alkalosis, and of course, metabolic acidosis versus alkalosis. I hope this helped you. Uh, you can do it. Nursing school is hard, but I always tell students if I can do it, anybody can do it. So we're better together. If this helped you, please show another student. Take care.